I'm Levi Garrett, and this is part number two of wheel seal replacement. If you've already seen part one, then you already have an idea what's going on here. And I just brought this truck back in, I took it out to the pressure washer because, once again, if you saw part one, you can tell that this was a mess. The old brick shoes, the rest of it pretty much looked the exact same. Now, if you're curious as to how I did that, all you have to do, jack this corner up, which you would anyway to take the wheels off, dump your air so it settles and dumps all the air out of the bag, and then once it's as flat as it'll go, take a chain, wrap it around your spring to your frame, and air it back up. Lock your power divider in, you can run it out, bring it back in. Not a big deal. So, now that it's all cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and start putting her back together. Alright, so we're just going to go ahead and get our jack back under it real quick, take the chain off. Like I say, this is okay, but depending on your chain or circumstances or whatever, you don't want to leave it there. So, and it has to be jacked back up anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead real quick and get it back on the stand. As soon as you got your jack under there, all you got to do next is dump your air. Now I got the brakes set so it doesn't really matter, but shock your wheels anyway, just to be safe. Okay. So, like everything else on assembly, you want everything clean. So, I just take ether, like brake cleaner, just a little cheaper. Just run it over there, get everything cleaned up. Make sure there's no dust or dirt or any of that crap. And then, I'm going to take a piece of emery cloth, and you're going to run it right around the edge here. Now this is where your seal rides on your hub, so it's going to be pretty important that you get that clean. That way that seal doesn't rupture itself. Take that, wrap it around. Take your juice. That's all you need. You look on there, you can see how far that seal goes. You can see little cancer pits. So as long as it's clean up to that point and smooth all the way around, should be good. All right, now that you got your spindle all cleaned up, I like putting my brake shoes on first. That way I don't have to worry about having the hub in my way. And as long as everything is clean, you don't have to worry about getting anything on your freshly clean slip handle. So, personal preference, it doesn't matter, but I'll just show you how to do this. That way, you already know. So, once you get everything out of your pack that comes in it, these little doodads. And once again, guys, this is for an eaten axle. So, these are eaten brakes. If you have Rock wheel brakes, those are different. So, this is solely eaten. So, once you get your little spring deals on there, like I say, all they do is pop in there. Once you get them in, rest them in their little saddles, push the springs in, roll them around, push them in. And you're going to roll around these little holes here. That's what's going to hold that in there. No, way, it doesn't fall out. Do it again on the next one. Like I say, 
you can't get them mixed up because one side is bigger. So they only go in one end. Pop it in there. Make sure they're seated. Grab your big spring. Get it locked on that pin in there. Watch me struggle around. Okay. Once you got them, just let them hang like that. Come over. And just gonna kind of walk them on. So, get one end sitting up there. And if you have this happen, where it's not sitting down inside this saddle fully, then you just have to adjust your slack adjuster so it rolls this his cam around to where these little rollers rest in that saddle. So I'll roll it around real quick. All right, so I've got it rolled around to where this little roller is sitting in this saddle. So this shoe, it just hangs there, it doesn't go anywhere. This one, you can rock it around, push this end down, just like that, hold together. Alright, now putting these springs on is a pain in the ass. I'm sure someone has a good way to do it, I don't know. So, however you guys can figure out how to get these on, without hurting yourselves is great. What happens, you stretch that down and that spring keeps hitting that stud so you just have to fight around with it until you finally figure out some way to get it to play nice with you to where it'll actually work right. All right, so I finally got the springs back in the shoes, and those things are a total bitch. So, like I say, I just slipped my bar in there, got it held down, got it to hook there, and while it was just hanging there, I took a big pair of channel locks and just crimped it so it popped in there. Like I say, those things come flying out of there at any minute, so if you're fighting with them, just be careful. All right, next step, back to our hub, which is all freshly cleaned. Just turn it over and just get it aligned so that those studs don't fall back through the holes on your drum. Take your bearing. Now this is the same bearing, and like I say, this is the same bearing that we just beat out of there, and nothing's wrong with it. A lot of guys will probably tell you if you take one out like that, you're gonna ruin it. Like say, as long as you hit right on this edge and keep it flush, the inside, you're not gonna hurt a thing. Now before you put it back in, take a little oil. You're just gonna run it in it. That's just kind of a pre-lube. Set her in there. Just run it around real quick. Help get lubed. Take the new bearing, new seal, sorry. Slip her out. Get rid of that. Right, just take a little oil. Just run around the outside edge. Now if you guys are putting a Stemco seal in, you're going to have to replace the wear sleeve that's on there. But, we don't use Stemco's. This is a Scott seal, typically we use national ones 
as good as the other. I've had good luck with both. Prefer national, but whatever you can get. Once you get her set in there, take your big driver. And you're gonna set it out like that. Once you got it in there, just take a hammer. You're just gonna try to hold that straight as you can. And you're just gonna go on that until it sounds solid. Now to check it, just take your finger and go around the outside edge. Now if it feels high in one spot, then probably needs to go down a little more. Okay. Now, with that in there, once again, take a little oil, run it on the inside of that. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little residue. Pick that up. Put it on there. screwed up so it's all crooked. Alright. Now same deal with your outer bearing. Make sure that it's got some oil on it. So slide it in there. Just let that hang out. Now you don't have to worry too much about getting these clean if you kept them clean when you took them out. Now if they got dirty, obviously you got to clean them up. So take your inner and spin that in there. Get it as tight as you can by hand. Then you're going to take your big three quarter ratchet. Friend move. Put it in there. Just can tighten that down. Now, in order to set your bearings, you're going to want to get that just as tight as you can. Once you got it that tight, you're going to loosen it. Back that nut off a little bit. Spin it back up. Tight as you can get with just your hand. And once you got it there, just grab a hold of that. If it spins, life's good. If it doesn't, that nut's too tight. Next up, this lock ring has a little ear on it. On the spindle, there's a channel. Now, you're going to line that ear up, and that ear that's on the nut has to line up with one of these holes. So you just get it turned until it finally goes in. You'll know when it does, it'll be flush. Next up, got your secondary lock ring. And don't forget, same deal, has a little ear on it. Line that ear up with the channel. Slip it in there. Take your outer nut. It's been in there. And be really careful not to cross thread these because obviously you get ruining up those threads and then your life's going to suck. Get that in there, take your big three quarter, 
and you can do one of two things on this. You can either tighten it as much as you can with just a ratchet, or you can take a three quarter impact. Like I say, you just want it tight. Now after you get that nut, nut, sorry, just as tight as you can, you're gonna take a thin pair of pliers, not needle nose, just something that has kind of a long point on it. And when you look around this, you just try to pick a couple of ears that are kind of square with the edges. Typically there will be two. Once you find them, you're just gonna slip this in there. And you're gonna try to get a hold of that ear. And they're pretty soft, they bend easy. Once you get them, bring them down. You're just gonna fold them flat against the sides of that nut. That way, if it tries to back off, it runs into that. The ear that's in this channel holds it. That keeps it flush on the secondary lock. And that's what holds the inner nut tight. That keeps your whole shebang from coming off on the road. All we have to do now, get our new axle gasket on here. Take the axle, slide her back in. Alright, so got her all cleaned up, got your old gasket off, new gasket on. Now if you don't have a new gasket, you can use Permatex. It works just as good. If you take your old or your axle out and the old gasket doesn't tear, you can reuse it if you're in a bind. I've done that too. But if you have a new gasket, it takes about five extra minutes to clean it up. And put a new one on. Once you got that, slide your axle in there. It'll bottom out. And you're just going to want to push that up a little bit until those threads line up. 